something that I really like about India is that despite the rapid westernization into the 21st century, we still as a society haven't become a completely nuclear society in all respects. Some of us still run family businesses, some of us still live in joint families, and I'm one of them. For about 21 years of my life, I've stayed in a family of about 18 people, and that kind of setup brought me extremely close to my uncles, aunts, cousins, grandparents, and we kind of bonded right from childhood. And like all families, my family too had a star of the hall. And that was one of my uncles. Here's somebody who mastered the art of playing pranks. Somebody who is an ardent tinkerer. Somebody who had a wonderful sense of humor. No matter how sad the person is in front of me, he can make him burst into laughter. But one fine day, that smile vanished. From complete chirpiness to screaming silence. He succumbed to a medical emergency all too suddenly. Obviously, there are multiple medical reasons that go behind such an event, but more often, there are these chronic diseases that lie at the foundation of it. And diabetes runs rampant in my family. So this event actually drove me to try and explore this disease which was constantly posing a threat to the well-being of the people that mean the world to me. And then I started understanding it, I started comprehending facts, figures, what actually a diabetic person undergoes into its day-to-day -day lives. And I figured out that as Indians, we are exposed to diabetes a little more than what we think that we are. Allow me to ask you a question. How many of you have known a surgeon, engineers, scientists, designers, entrepreneurs, as friends probably? A couple of you? I'm sure you can count them at the tip of your fingers, right? Compare this to the fact that every fifth adult in urban India is diabetic. Now, that's the impact that this disease has on our society. As a designer, I did not want to change the face of healthcare altogether, neither was I aiming to attempt a cure for diabetes. All I wanted to do is to just address these adversities that my family members were facing. Just that. And the, and the biggest one that they faced on a daily basis was the fluctuation. The blood glucose fluctuation. Now, if we see the current scenario, the patient will go to a diagnostic center and will get a few blood tests done. These tests and the reports, the findings of it, will be taken to the endocrinologist. He will interpret it. He will prescribe a medication which is to be followed by the patient for the coming weeks or months. I'm sure all of you know that diabetes or the blood glucose level fluctuates with your food intake, stress levels, and exercise. All of these vary on a daily basis. Then how does the same insulin count that you're taking every day help you? And this is because that the current system is an open loop system. The patient is connected to the diagnosis and the patient is connected to the insulin delivery. But the diagnosis, which is the device which finds how much of insulin you need, versus the device which gives you insulin, both are not connected. This is where I saw opportunity. And I connected them. Hence, now it becomes a closed-loop system, which means it is a need-based system, need and feedback. Now, if I simplify this, and if I give an example, 
the current system, which is the open loop, is more like how humans eat. We eat even when we are not hungry. Right? The closed loop is more like how animals eat. They eat when they are hungry. Need and feedback. Now, the next hurdle that I faced was when things become need-based, it means that there are going to be multiple small, small quantity of insulin which is going to be administered onto the patient multiple times in a day. In the current scenario, a lot of diabetic patients take insulin injections by themselves, which means they'll be giving pain to themselves many more times. Does that justify? When we are trying to solve one problem, I can't create another problem. So that probably instigated a need where I wanted it to be a pain-free system. How do I make it? It almost seemed impossible. And whenever I stumble upon a problem where I see that it's almost impossible to resolve, I usually go back to nature. And I believe that most of these engineering mechanisms are almost as a life prototype right in there. And that's where I found mine. So one day, what happened, me and my nephew were walking, we were crossing the road, and in the middle of the road, my nephew tells me, Phew, you have a mosquito on your hand. Obviously, I didn't freak out at the center of it, but a few steps ahead, I just looked at my hand and it was not there. And that struck a lightning. That a mosquito, which gives me malaria, which is harmful for my body, why can't I use the same system to give me something which is more constructive? And that led to the microneedle array, a pain-free administration of insulin inside the human skin. Something like this. And then I figured out that this is still not it. Because by solving a multitude of problems with technology, I was adding a lot of electronic components into the system. And when the number or quantity increases, obviously the weight increases. Beyond a certain point, you cannot reduce the weight. So what do you do? This was another big adversity that I faced. Because I wanted everything to happen, but I did not want it to increase in weight. So then I started figuring out that what is happening currently in the market, all the fitness gears, everything was going more towards more and more compact, singular device. And that's where I thought, let's go against the trend. Let's try and break it. What if instead of combining, I separate them? I didn't know whether it would work or not, but I still made a try. And I separated the diagnosis, which is detecting the blood glucose level, and I separated the insulin delivery. And it worked. Not just by reducing the weight, because had the weight been more, it will not stick onto the human skin because it's against gravity. It will peel off. And if I'm trying to solve so many problems for the benefit of the user, and if it keeps on peeling off, it doesn't make sense. The patient cannot use it, then what's the point? So when it becomes lightweight, it sticks onto your body comfortably. And that's where I saw a solution, bang on. You separate them. I went against, and luckily, I succeeded. But then again, that wasn't it. So many times, the diabetic patients end up into an emergency situation. So many times, they also meet with accidents. They would fall unconscious in the middle of the road. And what, what happens? Usually, the paramedics are trained to administer more life-saving practices onto the patients. They probably take a little longer to rule out all the possibilities and jump onto hypoglycemia, which is low blood glucose level. That's it. Very simple. All you have to do is to just put sugar into the mouth. That's it. And the person is saved. In the Indian context, we do not carry health cards or any such information into our wallets or into our purses, which tells the doctor immediately that this is the history of the patient. Do not try something else first. Let's try XYZ first. 
that's where I saw an opportunity. And I used the two separated units to do this function as well. So that whenever an emergency arises, all the paramedics have to do is to just put the phone next to the device and they'll get the primary health information about the patient and administer the requisite health immediately. Because sometimes it's not the facilities that kill the patient, it is the time window that kills it. And now all these solutions with another few functions and everything, when it amalgamates, it makes something like this, which is the insulin delivery system, a pain-free, closed-loop solution to diabetes. Okay. Thank you. But then if I go back to the journey, I realized that every time when I was trying to figure, in, when I was trying to figure out what the diabetics need and what problems they are undergoing, I was coming up with a lot of problems that were very difficult to deal with. Say, for example, in diabetes, none of the problems are isolated in nature. There are multiple problems that affect each other. They are interlinked. And their effects are also compounded. So in such a complex situation, I felt that there was a need for me to go a little more systematically. A little more systematic, rather. So what I did was, I started clustering all the problems. And sooner I realized that these adversities or problems are actually something that I can group into three different categories. The technical, systemic, and behavioral. Technical, as the name suggests, is more to do with the engineering side, something that would hinder the smooth functioning of a system. Those club into the technical clusters. Systemic, as again, how the name suggests, is more to do with the macro-level problems. And behavioral, obviously, is to do with us. Now, any complex structure, if you break down into bricks or units, they ultimately lead to these. These three adversities, clusters, do not just help you to solve design problems, but they also help you to solve other problems across other verticals. All you have to do is to regroup these bricks, these bricks that function as three different kinds of adversities, technical, behavioral, and systemic. Regroup them, and you have a solution tower in front of you. So, embrace all the adversities that you stumble upon. Don't stop till you literally transmute them into opportunities, because it is the greatest adversities that present the best opportunities for innovation. Thank you.